Earlier this month, we brought you the story of the group banding together to oppose initiated measure 28. That is a repeal on the state's ability to tax food and groceries. The coalition touting a new memo tonight on the effects it might have on South Dakota, while proponents say the numbers are overblown. Cooper Seamer in studio with an election 2024 update for us tonight. Cooper. Yeah, Brian and Andrea, a new fiscal analysis from the Legislative Research Council paints a much different picture of the fiscal impact that IM28 would have on the state's budget. While its proponents point to an earlier note from the LRC and the Attorney General's office with a smaller impact, opponents say flaws in the measure's language could impact almost everything consumers use. A memo prepared for the Joint Committee on Appropriations paints a wildly different picture on what fiscal impact initiated Measure 28 would have for South Dakota's budget. Depending on the definition of human consumption, the measure would have an impact of anywhere between $133 million to $646 million. That includes hypothetical number crunching of applying the measure to everything from gasoline, energy, and medicine. IM28's opponents argue that this is why the measure should fail, that it's written poorly and has a number of unintended consequences. Based on these updated impact numbers, every South Dakotan should be extremely concerned about what IM28 would mean for our communities. We've known since day one that IM28 was poorly drafted. IM28 eliminates sales tax far beyond just groceries. That is indisputable. But one of its sponsors disagrees. Dakotans for Health co-founder Rick Wyland says this memo was ordered by the committee and meant to include anything that could be used as human consumption. The groups that have amassed to, to oppose this are really putting out uh, really disinformation, uh, false flags, false accusations. He argues the numbers don't line up with what the LRC and Attorney General's office stated when the measure was put on the ballot in two separate memos. It, it clarifies that, first of all, this tax is only the state's share of 4.2%. That's what the fiscal note was based on, and that's $123.9 million. And Wylan again points out that because this is coming as an initiated measure, not a constitutional amendment, the legislature has the final say on what counts as human consumption. He says if opponents are worried about those uncertainties, they could then address them. The legislature, you know, which is controlled hands down by the Republican Party, could clarify language if it felt it needed to. Ryland says he doubts arguments from the measure's opponents will do much to sway voters as he points to past polling that shows that it has overwhelming support, but he says opponents are still trying to mislead voters. 